Good morning. We're at day three of the uh, UCI Worlds. I painted yesterday the junior women time trial, but I did not shoot any video of it. It was a bit of a hectic day. Doctor's appointments, ER trips, you know, a day in the life. But uh, things are relatively well, although my wife is suffering from extreme knee pain, and we're still going to be dealing with that. So I'm only going to get one of the races painted today. I will not be painting the men's under 23 time trial. I will just focus on the elite women today. And that's where we are right now with uh, what may well turn out to be a winning ride by uh, Emiliska of Belarus. So this is the first time, the first rider just went through the time check and uh, immediately afterwards she was, well, she hasn't been caught, but Amalisk is catching people right and left, almost literally. So she's just catching the um, Ukrainian rider Olga Shekel, I believe it was. Sorry, that name didn't stick in my head real well. But setting a new best time at this checkpoint of 14 kilometers. Two minutes, almost two and a quarter minutes faster than anybody else thus far. In the background, which I'm just starting on now, you can see a Spanish rider who's also been caught if I remember the start list, perhaps I can look. Actually, it was a Kuwaiti. So the Spanish rider was has been caught by both of these riders. There is one other, I believe, Kuwaiti rider on course who's already been caught by everybody. So the first person through the time check was the second to start. And it just goes down from there, so second person through the time start was like the fifth to start so it's but that's also the way they do it they start out with um, some of the lower seated racers the racers are not necessarily expected to do well and so it builds quality of the rider the times all of that build as we go through the um, start list although with a ride like this by Emma Luskia, it may turn out that we're looking at the winner of the race right now. That's the hard thing about painting the time trials is like unlike the mint, the uh, road races, you actually know who's doing what, who the winner is going to be. It's, you know, whoever gets across the line first and raises their arms. And you have a fair amount of warning about that. With these races, because they're racing one at a time against the clock, the very first rider could be the one to win the race. You just don't know. So that makes it a little more entertaining. I'm trying to guess who I should have painted. You will notice that I have changed the position of the camera. I'm also sitting in another part of the house. Um, one, so one, the cat can't walk across the painting across again. Although perhaps you all enjoyed seeing my cat walk through. So the way I do these, which I think I know I've talked about before, but first I'm getting the composition laid in with this uh, India ink felt pen and using this kind of pen because it allows the drying time is not a factor for the ink. Believe me, you don't want to sit here and watch, <laughs> watch ink dry, watch paint dry. Is that how exciting my life is? I spend time watching paint dry. Actually, my life is very exciting. Sometimes, too. <laughs> so that's the color, I mean, the line part of it. Now we'll start laying in the colors. Also, the other part of moving the camera position, like not only I'm in a different part of the house, but I realized my hand was hiding most of my right hand, so I've put the camera over my left shoulder, hoping to give you a better chance to see what I'm doing. So, starting with the pale colors first, 
this allows I like to do it this way and I have seen other people on YouTube do it differently but I like to go with the light colors first gives me a purer brighter canvas cleaner color and after all color is what my work is about really that's what I really enjoy to that end I'll also talk about using these um, really great watercolors they are Yarka St. Petersburg they're made by Richson Art I'll provide you a link <clears throat> excuse me link to those to that company because they just make a really great watercolor that has really just beautiful bright colors and they're super saturated you can see just how intense this red is that I'm laying in right now and that's a factor of two things one the quality of the watercolor being the most important but also, again, keeping that color pure, not allowing it to mix. Let's say if I had a darker color in there, because you do get bleeds and watercolors are really quite alive and they will pick up the other colors next to them, even after, even if that color has dried a little bit. So you have to be careful about laying wet next to dry or particularly wet next to wet because you will end up with plumes I like to call them of the color blending creeping into the other which can be a useful technique a useful mistake but it may not be what you want so you just need to be aware and be in control of that watercolors are about <laughs> riding the edge of control and lack thereof so now we'll move to the cooler colors I think of cool colors think of how it's cool in the shade so cool colors you can think of as shade colors blues greens And you need to think about that. You need to think about building the palette. How are you going to balance your colors? There's a lot of talk about the color wheel. This painting will end up having the entire color wheel in it. But what are the dominant colors? How, you know, what do you... How are you relating your colors? And there's all kinds of different color schemes. And I can talk about that in subsequent videos. So that was the brighter blue. Now I want to get a darker. I'm going to use this um, phthalo blue. Get this kid a little bit darker than this one too. Pull the animal hairs out of my brush now, of course they're racing in England so it's cold it's rainy it's wet not ideal conditions for racing but a couple of years back actually what 2016 they were racing in Doha in the Middle East they were dealing with, uh, they actually had a sandstorm blow across the men's road race. So for guys who were there, these conditions are fabulous. Because that was awful. God, the heat was intense. There was a chance I was going to be at those races through the auspice of Sabina Visiting Artist through my alma mater VCU. But we just couldn't get it organized <clears throat> in time. So it goes. Just get this little bit of green for the. And see, I had waited on the green of the Belarus kit.
to make sure that the green and the red didn't blend. So that's what I mean about sort of controlling those blend creeps. Being aware of what can happen. And sometimes, you know, what can go wrong is great. But sometimes it's not what you want it. And this one I'm doing right now is see this is the time trial marker where they're gonna where it tells the riders where they're gonna get timed. And it's bright white. But when working with the watercolors, white, you're not adding white. It's always a translucent color, so you're always paper is a real factor in your painting. So anytime you want white, you're leaving paper visible. The fun part is when you paint over a section that you meant to be white, because uh, you're done. That's that. No coming back from that one. So just working on this foliage here. That's the other thing about watercolors. You there, are, there will be times when you just did it wrong and it's gone. That, that you have to be able to accept that one, failure is, what's the saying? Failure is not an option. In the case of the watercolors, failure is almost inevitable. So you have to be willing to accept that when you work. You're, there's no going back and correcting. That's what I'm trying to say. So you either have to be willing to accept the mistake and work with it, or willing to say, well, that went wrong and throw it away and start over. But there's a certain amount of, I find, freedom in that. So I'm mixing now, trying to get, add a little bit of this ultramarine blue to the green to sort of get this more atmospheric, distant colors. So let's see how that's, and then I'm also using more water in it because as colors fade into the distance, I think I kind of gave it away, the emphasis on the word fade is they lose their distinctness, they lose their sharpness, and they pick up more of the atmospheric blues, the sky mixing in. So things are less distinct, less sharp. So now just adding a little bit of shadow to these white areas. I'm going to get this tree trunk, I'm looking at it, again we're in England, it's very wet, so the tree itself is rather mossy and green toned, just adding a little more definition to the trees in the background with this darker blue green. So the time trial is a race against the clock, one rider going at a time, so it's actually fairly rare. Things have gone wrong for riders when they start seeing each other, or right, depending on whether you're the one doing the catching or the one being caught. So, just laying in the colors. I realized I forgot to title this one before I started painting it, much as I usually do. I haven't quite thought of a title yet. Any ideas? So, I will lay a title in here before. And of course, you know, I don't, sometimes the title, the image inspires the title right off the bat. There went my water, my paper towel. I haven't talked about that. So, I use Richson Art watercolors. I share the work on my blog at theartofcycling.blogspot.com 
Every one of the paintings I write about there has a click-through link to my website, gregleach.com, where you can purchase the work. And I will, in those sites, in the blog, talk more about what's happening in the painting and how it, why it's significant, what the story is, because these are a little bit of a, I mean, these are clearly narrative paintings. So, there you are. I hope you will um, click the like button, subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, and uh, let your cycling slash watercolor buddies know about the artwork. Thanks for taking the time to watch.